we're speaking today with Robert Wogelmuth about lies men believe. And welcome to the program, Robert. Thank you, Martin. It's a pleasure to be with you. Um, I want to talk about the impetus behind the book. I think, um, uh, and, uh, and you tell me if I'm not right in this, but some men, maybe out of pride, believe um, that they don't believe in lies, and others probably, and this can be just as dangerous, are overwhelmed with their sense of guilt. So what was the impetus in, in putting this book together for men? That's very easy to answer. I'm married to Nancy, the formerly Nancy Lee DeMoss, who has a daily radio broadcast called Revive Our Hearts, and her best-selling book is called Lies Women Believe. And so like Lies Men Believe, it includes 40 lies that uh, women have believed over the years, and that book has sold a million copies. And so um, over the years before we were married, which was now four and a half years ago, uh, various men authors would come to her and say, you know, there ought to be a counterpart to this, a lies men believe, and she just never felt like that was the right guy. And then she married me, and soon after we married, she said, you know, there ought to be a lies men believe. Yes. And so that, that's been a real pleasure to, to do this book alongside her. In fact, uh, a couple summers ago when I was working on this book, she was updating lies women believe because the book was 10 years old. So we spent the summer writing lies together, side by side. That's what we did. We wrote lies. But uh, the truth is that men need this book because uh, there are a lot of things, Martin, but one of the things that men tend to believe is that we can do it ourselves. We don't need help. Um, you know, I'll figure it out is the common refrain from a, lo a lot of men. And, um, and more often than not, we're not deceived by lies. We willingly sin. We willingly step into stuff, figuring that we'll work it out. So if, if we'd have a chance to interview Adam, for example, you know, sit down on a rock outside the garden after he'd been expunged, and we would ask him, "Do you did you know when you took the fruit after your wife had taken the fruit that you were doing the wrong thing? What would he say? Right. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Then we'd say, like you do sometimes with a child, like, what were you thinking? And he would say, I was thinking that I'll figure this out down the road. Somehow I'm smart enough. I'm savvy enough. I'm articulate enough. I have enough friends that somehow I'll get out of this thing. I'll figure it out. So the, the big problem, I think, with men is that we aren't willing, humble, to face the fact that we don't have it all figured out and that we need help and that lies are all around us. And this, these chapters, the book is divided into six sec uh, sections, lies we believe about God, lies, lies we believe about marriage, about sexuality, about um, the world, all kinds of things like that. But at the end of the day, this is, this is about men who, who in many cases um, know the truth. There's, there's something built into our hearts into our minds that God has put there that says, you know, this is right and this is wrong. And so, and uh, actually this isn't a book, it's a conversation. My goal in writing this book is to sit down with a guy across a cup of coffee and ask him to open his heart to me and ask him the question, where do you fall? Where, where are you most vulnerable? Which, what lies are you most likely to believe? Where are you saying to yourself, I'll figure this out? So, for example, over the years, I've had actually the opportunity of sitting down with guys who are in illicit affairs. And I've said, help me understand how this happened. And did you know that you were doing the wrong thing? Did you know that you had a faithful wife who had no idea what you were doing and this was about to destroy you? And his answer is, well, first of all, I didn't plan on getting caught, but now that I'm caught, I'll work this out. Somehow I'll make this work, you know? And, and that's, that's a massive lie. And, and the truth is, the subtitle of this book is really the secret to it. It's the truth that sets us free. So who wants to be in bondage? Who says, you know what? I think I'll choose prison over an open meadow that I can run in. You know, give me those bars, that sounds great. No. We prefer freedom over bondage. 
but believing lies puts us in bondage. And you just look at the scripture and it's filled with admonitions that, that, that sin enslaves us. The book of Romans chapter five, the apostle Paul talks about the choices we have to, to, uh, to believe or not to believe for good and for evil. And, and we choose evil, we'll pay the price. I mean, every single time. And so how much better to be warned of this before it's too late and, and reach a guy as a friend, a reader, and say, man, I would love to be able to help you avoid the pain that you're about to experience as a result of you believing these lies. How, how does um, someone move from a position of being caught up in lies to a place of freedom? Or what are some of the practical steps that you recommend for the reader during that yeah. conversation? Transparency. So I, I have to be willing, and this is really important, Martin, I have to be willing to own up to this myself. So, you know, we men, I think women too, but we're to, let's talk to men for now. We, we are really good at self-talk, right? So we chat with ourselves, you know, and in fact, sometimes pride shows up when I make a mistake and I, I don't think I should have made the mistake and that's pride, right? So I'm hard on myself. I'd be harder on myself than I would be on you if you had done the same thing, right? right. So I issue grace to you, but it's really hard for me to issue grace to myself. So transparency, that is my willingness to own up to, to what I've done, to my sin, you know, and I could call it a shortcoming or a foible or, you know, language that we use. Truth is it's sin. And so we own up to it. So I have, I have messed up here. I've really messed up. So I've got to start there. And then I've got to look for somebody or look to somebody who I can trust with what I've just discovered about myself. Now you start on your knees and you confess, you say, Lord, I'm going to picture you like the father of the prodigal, who's not just waiting for me to come home, but running toward me when I decide to come home. So you, you confess to the Lord. And if you've got a friend and my, my pleading with you, Martin would be have a friend, have a friend who loves you enough to listen to, to you, uh, a safe place for you to go, but somebody that loves you enough that says, you know, that is a problem. Uh, those, those, those things, transparency, vulnerability to yourself, honesty with yourself, and then honesty before the Lord. So, you know, the, the story in the, in the gospels, the man, two men come to the temple to pray, right? And one stands there and, and he's self-righteous. He's the elder brother. He's good to go. And another man who falls on his face and pleads with the Lord to be merciful to him because he's a sinner. And Jesus said, who went away from the temple forgiven? Well, the guy who was willing to, to admit to himself and then to the, to the father where he was and where he had fallen short. So those are the requirements. Those are essential. Great. Well, thank you, Robert, for taking some time today to tell us about lies men believe. Um, we really appreciate it, um, and we appreciate your time. I hope you're keeping safe during this time of wow. isolation, and um, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Martin. A pleasure to be with you, friend.